Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin with the launch of another Ambassador mission and this one we will hope to get to Pluto. So we'll see about that and see if I can finagle that. Hopefully we can. Everything's lined up. Uh, Thrall is up. SAS is now on. And the date is, for reference, August 29th, 1977. So smack in the middle of the Voyager window. And we'll have another ambassador mission completing in 17 days, and so that'll uh, get the tail end of things. Hopefully, we'll get them all underway safely. Let's find out. So, uh, getting some space here. Ignition. And launch. I think that considering we've got this Earth to Jupiter transfer all the way up to 30 days, maybe we'll build a few more ambassadors just in case. We really can't afford to miss out on our missions, the Uranus flyby, Neptune flyby, and Pluto flyby. So we'll give them as many chances as possible, just in case something goes wrong. I feel like I have to add a little bit of manual yaw here because it's really... For some reason Smart ASS is not using all of the yaw control even though it was higher than 65 degrees of pitch and I don't get that. Well, anyway, uh, let me just manually fix that, get to 65 degrees where it ought to be. Uh, I wish I knew why it had this problem. Seems to be related to my attempt to fine-tune its PID, but I'm not going to mess with it right now. Not on such a critical flight. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. And set. Okay. That's a booster we're not going to recover. Alright, separation and ignition. Okay. And we have a good J2. Right. Uh, let's wait until we exit the atmosphere before laying go of the fairings this time. Still a little bit fairing shy after. Uh, last time. Alright, fairing separation. Yeah, yeah, it's a tight separation there. Alright, we are about to make orbit here. And shut down. That's, whoop, whoop, come on game. That's good enough. 210 by 165. And now let's plot for Jupiter and beyond. Alright, so here's the situation. We've got Jupiter, we've got Saturn, and we've got something to do with Pluto there. Uh, it's not quite an, an encounter, but the problem here is that that encounter, possible encounter, is in 19 years and 281 days and our contract needs us to be there in 13 years. So it's not fast enough. Um, I can continue to try and tweak this so that we get there fast enough, but I feel like what I need to do is just do the burn to Pluto, uh, sorry, do the burn to Jupiter first, because uh, that's bound to be off, and then replot after that. So we'll try and get this as right as possible to Jupiter, and then maybe some mid-course plane changes, but or other adjustments, corrections, but that's a big, big gap. I mean, 19 years to 13 years, we have to be going a lot faster. Pretty much means we have to hit Saturn earlier and Jupiter earlier. I wasn't even trying to maintain the Saturn encounter there while trying to adjust this. It just uh, it stayed. We might want to go closer to Saturn. We'll see. Let's try and do this burn first because again there's bound to be some inaccuracies and I'm tweaking it so finely 
Maybe some make course adjustment will do a better job of adjusting our final orbit. All right. Well, I'm trusting that that's not the real delta V for either this stage or the centaur stage and that we're talking about a 15 minute burn. Let's just plan for that. All right, ignition. Or actually, maybe it wasn't even reading this delta V here properly. Let me see. No, it's going with that. But I didn't think that we'd have seven minutes and five seconds to burn, and it doesn't look like that's the real burn time. Okay, so this display is totally messed up. We've got some hydrogen boil off in the centaur stage. Now I have to watch out for my periapsis again. Mm, I'll wait until this stage is over and then reconsider. There's no easy way to tilt a few degrees above our prograde vector, is there? Okay, set and ignition. Okay, I'll go with that, increase the pitch a bit, and yaw, uh, negative. Well, even this stage won't be enough, we're going to have to continue on to the asterisk stage. We are in the atmosphere temporarily. Okay, hopefully it's safe to point at a node now. Yes, it is. All right, and now for the Astra stage. Separation and ignition. We might actually have been a little bit early on the burn, oddly enough, despite the complexity of the whole thing, but yeah, who knows where we're going to end up as far as our plot that had some sort of Pluto thing going. Maybe magically we'll have a Pluto encounter after this, you never know. Okay, we're getting the semblance of something happening at Jupiter there. I'll try and go for the same periapsis and shut down at that point. Oh, wait, it's not... Okay, there we go. But, uh, oh, it looks like we've hit a minimum on the periapsis there, and it's not good enough to go where we want to go. Definitely not. So, we have to replot. Mm, well, it depends on whether there's an inclination. There probably isn't much inclination issues, so it should be good to do it early rather than as a mid-course correction. For inclination, it's better to do it as a mid-course correction, but I don't think there's much inclination issue right now. Otherwise, you wouldn't hit Jupiter at all. Well, Jupiter is big, though. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is this burn, which will get us not only a center encounter, but it at least looks like it's going pretty fast though it's not really meeting up with uh, Pluto's orbit. The tough part of meeting up with Pluto's orbit quickly is that we're going to end up having a, um, well, an escape trajectory. It's not going to be uh, still in orbit around the sun if we want to go quickly. So some of the numbers might not be particularly accurate, like the inclination might be iffy, so I'm going to have to eyeball it to some extent to get close. Anyway, we only have 28 seconds to this node, so we better get started. It is actually mostly an inclination change, as it so happens. Okay, it says very stable, so ignition. So we've got the Jupiter encounter, and that's at 876,000 kilometers. We've got a pretty loose Saturn, Saturn periapsis right now. So maybe the first thing to do is try a node between Jupiter and Saturn and see if that can't help us 
change our inclination. Maybe Saturn can give us a boost in the right direction. But that's no guarantee. At least it'll probably preserve the Saturn encounter and get us closer to Saturn to make a maneuver there, though. Alright, folks. Well, this took a lot of doing and took a lot of time, but we finally have it. So, we've got a maneuver, actually before we hit Jupiter, of 919.9 meters per second, which we have. And it is storable fuel, so no problems there. And, and well, we've uh, come a little bit closer to Jupiter. It's actually 697,000 kilometers, I think. We still have a Saturn encounter, but it's very high. Uh, so, around Saturn, it's a 44 million kilometer periapsis, so not even particularly close to Saturn at all. But uh, as long as, you know, it's not smashing into Saturn, we're all right. And we do have a Jupiter periapsis after the maneuver, so that's good too. Uh, make sure everything is all right there. And it's not lying to me because, boy, is this tough. Because we've got a Pluto encounter and a Pluto periapsis uh, in 13 years and 36 days. Which, by my, my calculations is no less than 4,794 days. Then that's important because 4,794 is less than 4,859, which is the deadline for the Pluto flyby. So the difficult thing wasn't getting the Pluto encounter. The difficult thing was getting an encounter before our contract would be uh, failed. So anyway, this is what we've got. I present for your approval, but we will have to wait. Uh, this maneuver node is in 351 days, so I'm going to add the alarm. And it is all set. So, well, it's got to be a long trip. Lots will occur before we get there. After all, it's 1977 right now, so we're planning to arrive in 1990. Yep. All right, well, anyway, it's uh, recharging as expected. It's got its dish tuned to Earth. And we won't deploy the instruments until it's necessary to do so. Yep, uh, well, let, let's name this, actually. Maybe that's one thing we can do for it. Mm, Pluto Ambassador. As a special one. Okay with much trepidation and hope for this to succeed, I will leave it be and we will turn to other things. Alright, so for our next launch we will be trying again with the Mars Sample Return mission and this time I've uh, edited it so that the boosters all have the same fuel and I'll, uh, I'll be keeping the fairing for an extended period of time because we don't want that to happen again. And really, the fairing is quite narrow compared to the diameter of the J2 stage. So maybe, maybe we'll just lay off of trying to remove it until we uh, stop the J2 and reach orbit. Anyway, so throttle up, SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. We do have one more of these that has also been edited, so if it turns out that this has problems that I forgot to fix, we'll, uh, we'll have another chance. Alright, we are getting ready for booster separation. Everything is looking good. No apparent imbalance in the fuels in the boosters. And separation. Okay, as intended. Okay, that's the end of the core stage. Separation. And ignition. And we have good J2 ignition. And as I said, I'll just keep the fairings for now. I'd rather not be... I don't know. Should I try them? I mean, we're not going... We're not accelerating that much, and we're in space. All right, let's see if they work out. Okay, they do. All right. Okay, making orbit. And 
and shut down 240 by 208. This time I made sure to leave a little bit more room on my periapsis so that we don't accidentally dip down in the atmosphere again. And uh, it seems like we have enough in this stage to complete the transfer, so hopefully that's the case. Let me plot it out. Okay, well we have our transfer lined up. Unfortunately, because of the inclination of Mars with respect to the Earth at this time, um, well, we're going to have to take a while to get there. A year, actually. That's a long trip uh, for a Mars trip. So, yeah, we're going to hit it fairly late, possibly a little bit fast. So we'll see about that. Or, yeah, well, I mean, fast with respect to the Martian surface is what I mean. We're technically going very slowly to Mars, but... Okay, well, anyway, we will take what we can get. Let me turn on RCS. All right, here we go. And, come on, ignition. We are on our way to Mars. Okay, shut down. That's a little bit late. And of course we don't have an encounter. Okay, well, it looks like we're a little bit high there, so let me plot a mid-course adjustment. We've got a long trip anyway. Might as well give us a reason to pay attention to this along the way. Well, it doesn't want me to create a node on my first orbit. It wants to just give me my second orbit, so let me... Maybe I can make the correction here. Okay, all better. And let's just use RCS. Can we do this with just RCS? And definitely not the RCS from up there. It would seem like it. Okay. All right, well, this will take a while, but let me shut this down and just use the throttle. Okay, well, we are out of uh, RCS fuel on this stage, though technically we still have plenty of delta V in terms of what the J2 could deliver, but I don't want to use that, so we will separate that off. And now would be a good time to unlock this, or maybe it's too late. I don't know. Well, anyway, let's continue to fine-tune our approach to Mars. Well, that'll do the trick, I think. Oh, yes. All right. All situated. And this is on its way. The main dish is targeting Earth. And, um, hmm, I think I'll leave those fuels locked for now. So this is the only tank that's unlocked, and everything should be fine. Okay, let's make a maneuver node in Mars SOI. We don't need to make course adjustment. And it'll be a year and ten days. Let's add that alarm. And this is on its way to Mars. Okay. We've only done two launches so far, but the time it took to get that Pluto encounter and the time that we needed it, uh, well, that took a while, and so I think I'll wrap it up here and save the rest for next time. Uh, right now, we still have quite a few launches. We've got a possible outer comm one, but we remember that one was glitchy. Uh, so, Exo Moon Explorer, that's huge. Um, MapSat 1A, MapSat 2A, a Mars Base 1 and another Mars sample return mission. So those all have to go soon, uh, perhaps in the next uh, three weeks, let's say. And then we will resupply our stations. So that's the plan. And I hope the fact that we've gotten a Pluto mission underway is special enough for you to like this episode. If you did like this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.